Hey, it's Doug Liu here with Better Life Research Tips. Storytelling and questions are the two most powerful tools that are loved by great speakers to engage their audience. Stories engage the audience by making them expecting the closure. Questions engage the audience by making them expecting the answers. In this video, I will show you how to use stories to add life to your research presentation. I will talk about how to use questions in another video. Human brain is naturally receptive to good stories. People may forget facts, may forget data, but they do remember good stories. Good stories touch people's emotions, and they also have natural logic from beginning to closure. That's why they are more memorable than facts and data. Typical structure of a story include the three S. They are the setup, the struggle, and the solution. The setup provides context of a story and introduces the main character. Ideally, it should be somebody that the audience could sympathize with. After the setup, we want to enter the struggle as quick as we can, because the struggle is the hook of story that can engage the audience emotionally. Maybe something happens to the main characters. Maybe the main characters want something, but they cannot get it. So they have this struggle. If we are able to hook our audience with the struggle, then we will be able to impress our audience with the solution at the end of the story. A good story should have a solution that is not easily predictable but is reasonable and logic. That is how a typical story flows. We have the setup, we have the struggle, and we have the solution. So we have both emotion and logic to make our story memorable. There is a saying, never tell a story without a point, and never make a point without a story. If we want the audience to remember our key points, the best practice is to package each key point we have with a relevant story. The audience will feel the story, visualize it, and remember it. Stories are not only more memorable, they are generally more persuasive and more influential than facts and reasoning due to their f effects on people's emotions. That is why storytelling is a common tool used by experienced politicians, salespersons, and public speakers who want to influence people. You may think that in the research presentation, we talk about technology and data. There are not a lot of emotions there. You may be right, but there are still some ways we can reframe our research presentation as storytelling and use storytelling to make our presentation stand out and more impressive. There are three types of stories we can tell. The first is the story of the problem we try to solve. We can tell the history of the problem, how the problem affects people's life how other researchers have attempted to solve the problem, what are the challenges, what are the struggles, what failures we have experienced, where we were, and how we failed. And finally, we find the solution, which is the key message we want to convey in the presentation, and that would be a good story. Similarly, the benefits and implication of the solution could also have some potential emotional effects and thus could also be packaged into a story. The second story we can tell is the story of our data. We should look for creative ways to put our data in a story or let the data itself tell a story. When we present data, we should make sure we provide the context so the audience can understand what it means. What are the struggles of the data and how the struggles are finally solved? The third type of story is the stories of human beings. 
We may search stories relevant to our points on the web. We may also use stories from books. But better stories are the stories of our friends or family members, because they are generally more original, and most likely nobody has heard them yet. It may be OK to use a commonly known story from books or web, but we'd better be able to explain the story from a totally new angle. The best story is always the stories of ourselves, either as a researcher or as a normal human being. Telling personal stories is the best way to demonstrate authenticity. As we're talking with the audience, we are the best characters that they can sympathize with, especially when we show some vulnerability on ourselves. The most important personal story we need in the presentation is a story about who am I and why I am here talking with you. It should be used at the front of the talk to establish our personal credibility. Another personal story we can use is about our shared vision with the audience. It could be used at the end of the talk to inspire passions, especially when we want to influence the audience. In order to be able to use storytelling effectively in our presentations or other key communications, we should form a habit to accumulate stories in our daily life. One method is to regularly review our weakness, awkward moments, or failures, and summarize the lessons we learned. Another method is to often practice reciting the stories we heard, the movies we watched, or the books we read to our friends, and adding our own thoughts. A problem with such habit or training will not be afraid of making impromptu speech any longer, because they always have plenty of stories on hand from their lives. Thanks for watching. I'm Doug Liu with Research Tips for the Underdogs. Storytelling is an essential life skill. Until next time, let's accumulate stories for our lives and eventually make our lives a better story.